Uh, so I wanted to move on to the next play, which I think has um, the standout scene in all four plays. I do think that uh, uh, the, the, the play with Deep Nerdle, it has, it's probably the best play overall, but there's a scene where Danny is comforting Megan on the cell phone. Uh -huh. It reminded me of that scene, you know, in Tree of Life, where the boy walks out in there and his dad has the uh, the car catched up and if it came down, it would kill him. And you, you see him briefly contemplate that. Um, but anyway, da Danny and Megan are conversing over cell phones. And as the conversation goes on, uh, he goes over to her and touches her and grabs her on the arm. She said, it feels like we're here. I think that that is an incredibly moving scene. Uh, it is uh, uh, one of the standout scenes in all of your plays. And it's something that happens very naturally. And this is that type of thing that gets lost in some of the more bravura moments of these plays. And I'll tell you, that was a, that was a last minute add in. Because I, when I was looking at in, in doing the final draft, I said, let me have him go over to it. Because it just felt right. And this is one of those things that, I'm an intellect guy, but every so often you got to go with your gut. And I said, something was missing there. I got to make Danny walk over and put his arm around her uh, to feel it. Uh, and, and, and I agree, it's a great moment within the play. But for me, I think one of the top three or four scenes is the scene with Mr. Levin talking about the domino itself. But well, I, I think that that's uh, a more obviously great scene, but this yeah. is a very subtle thing yeah. that comes up, that uh, seemingly comes out of nowhere, but fits perfectly in with the context of the characters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the dominoes coming off, he even, it's almost like he's making the play up as it goes along. <laughs> um, it's a, a very creative uh, process. Um, and then it has the, the two characters, the Bridget character and the Megan character, the Bridget, uh, who you nicknames uh, Sexy Sully yeah. O'Sullivan. Yeah. Um, she uh, is, is in this play. It talks about his memories of her. It uh, has the scenes of the bus going by, which could be a, just a cardboard bus. Yeah. And um, uh, those type of things really work. It almost seems too like a, a dream as well when you have, if you can imagine the cardboard bus instead of a physically real bus. Yeah. Um, so but, a lot of these different uh, ways that the play can be produced, uh, you're imagining in your mind as a reader. Well, I do at one point, I think it, I have either Danny, I think Danny says that she's she's sort of like uh, in A Streetcar Named Desire when Blanche comes off the bus initially, except we really don't find out that much about Sexy Sully. She's just Sexy Sully. She's just this girl that has the beautiful reddish hair and she has the smile. She has this little, and I even link to this supermodel who has this sort of sexy little sneer on her face. That's almost exactly the way the real version of Bridget O'Sullivan was. And we don't get to, we, she's in almost the anti Blanche Dubois. Uh, one thing um, I do, at least when I read, is uh, I don't try to just have an initial assessment. I like to think about it first. At first, I thought after reading this play that the Bridget scenes with the Megan scenes don't cohere. But then I realized that the point was that they're not supposed to cohere, that he's having these dreams, he doesn't understand why he's having them. Mm. Um, and that the, the tenuous connection is that she has red hair, yeah. um, and that may be reminding uh, her, uh, her, her memories yeah. may be a reminder of Megan. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't think that they have to cohere in the way that is uh, that I may have Wanted yeah, well, and that's the 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 Bridget character. And at one point, she asks him to call her Bridget after initially calling her Sexy Sully. Then, when she ultimately rejects him, he goes back to calling her Sexy Sully. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we don't find out that much about her. She is, for all intents and purposes, an avatar of of beauty of 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 young teen lust. Megan is the, the girl that he's known that even through decades and into his marriage has been in his life, presumably. She is going through something. Danny, even from the earlier play, the, the, the previous play, seems to intuit that. And because of that, uh, he, he probably maybe is, I mean, he's going through his own stuff at work again and, uh, and, and whatnot. But this all seems to, to bring up the idea that 
the memories of this sexy Sully uh, are in a way for him to escape in a way. He even says at some point in the play, I think that, uh, how does he, how do I have him phrase it? That uh, uh, maybe I should have started the play with the bus or, or something like, uh, you know, he, 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 he's talking about which no, he heard it with Megan. Or should have started. Yeah. The, the reverse. And, um, uh, because, you know, Megan is more important, but he's got to be Danny. And, you know, he, he had, he had, he talks about this dream that uh, f from a different girl that he's groping in the dream. And then this somehow leads him into the sexy Sully stuff. And so this is how minds work, that there isn't any rational thing, but there's these intuitive connections, obviously, because both women have reddish type hair, there's that connection. Um, but they could be the yin and yang, and Danny is bouncing back and forth between her, Megan's widowhood and the sexy Sully as this avatar of young lust. Uh, I think you do give an explanation for the scene early on, and then there is the scene, the kissing coming in the bus, the sound of the brakes, the opening of the door, and there she is, as if the God is attending. It's just too poetic to not use. And there it is, it was, and it was real, it was real, it was. And that uh, opening monologue, the end of that, connects with the last scene where you talk about presence, yeah. and that present fills all of us, and it has to, it just has to, it just has. Yeah. Uh, it has the same rhythmical thing. The scenes sort of rhyme, but they play off of each other in the same way. And these are, this, a play like this is something that I don't overthink. Uh, I, I have the ideas, the structures come to me, and... We talk about, you just mentioned presence. Uh, well, that's what Danny does when he goes over and hugs Megan, uh, you know, on, on the cell phones. He's lending his presence. It's physical in the drama, but it's emotion. But she doesn't sense him as being there, but she feels Danny's presence. And that's maybe enough to get her through the loss of Michael and whatever ambivalence she has. Maybe she feels like a coward that maybe she should not have broken up with Danny. Uh, but whatever what and we we never really know what exactly megan is thinking we can intuit it we can maybe say there's a 75 percent chance she's thinking that but it might not be it could be something that she knew about michael uh and his condition or intuited and never spoke but we don't know that and we shouldn't know that what you leave out in a work of art is always as important as what is put in 